Please note that the Burn It Nutrition podcast is for educational purposes only and is not meant to substitute for the advice of a doctor. Please consult your GP before using any of the techniques or products discussed on this show. Hope you like it. Welcome to Episode 8 of the Burn It Nutrition Podcast. I'm your host, Joseph Navarro. On today's show, we will learn strategies you can apply to improve your own physical abilities by learning what the latest research is showing is best to do before a workout, as well as going over effective strategies to upgrade your recovery and get you closer to your goals. But first, let's hear the news and announcements. If you want to know exactly what you need to do to achieve a body transformation and get the body you've always wanted in a healthy, effective, and sustainable plan, then download your copy of Fifth Stage Keto. This will walk you through the stages to break past those weight loss plateaus and see the biggest changes in body composition. You can choose from two different workout plans that better fit your goals. Plus, you will learn how to effectively implement intermittent fasting with the personal strategies I used in my own transformation. And best of all is that I have recently converted Fifth Stage Keto into an audiobook. Yes, now you can sit back, relax, and listen to this powerful body transformation plan from the comfort of your warm couch. What is really special about Fifth Stage Keto is that you get both the 120-page ebook as well as the audiobook. So now you can follow along on your laptop or tablet while you listen as it is narrated for your enjoyment. Having a resource available like this audio and ebook combo when I started my transformation would have made my journey much smoother. Well, now I have created it for you to enjoy. This audiobook is unlike any other. It will keep you entertained while also giving you the methods to see progress and break past those weight loss plateaus, giving you everything you will need to make your body transformation attainable. So if you want to experience fifth stage keto with this one-two combo, then head over to burnitnutrition.com to get access to this powerful body transformation resource. I have created a coupon code for my podcast listeners, so use promo code BURNIT. This will give you $5 off at checkout. Guys, it has never been easier to learn the stages for effective weight loss until now. You can sit back, put your headphones on, and enjoy the experience to reach 5th stage keto. Again, head over to burnitnutrition.com and use coupon code BURNIT and get the body you have always wanted. I'm so glad to have you with us today. Now, let's start the show. Burn it. You are not alone as you begin this new stage of life. Learn the strategic methods to reach your goals and flourish the light within. With our guidance, you will uncover the hidden truths that have been missing from your understanding. It's time to let it burn. Success is due to our stretching to the challenges of life. Failure comes when we shrink from them. Insight by John C. Maxwell. Life can often stretch us beyond our comfort zone, forcing us to adapt to the many changes it brings. And how we view these moments in life that stretch us will determine how we respond to them. It's smart and advantageous to see the discomfort as a chance to adapt and raise to the challenge to strengthen yourself. But sometimes that stretch leaves us weaker than when we began. And that is one of the objectives of today's show to see when and what type of stretching will leave us feeling stronger and more capable of a challenge, but not in life, but in the realm of sports and physical fitness. Today, we will go over the latest research that is showing us the preferred methods for an effective warm-up to prevent injury and improve our performance. And later, we will also go over the importance of post-workout recovery and share some of the key strategies to implement after your exercise. The end goal of this episode is to help improve your exercise results by learning the importance of pre- and post-workout habits to implement, habits that are usually overlooked or skipped altogether. In 
In episode 5, we learned the importance of deadlifting and having physical fitness as a priority in your life. We went over the ways our bodies have evolved to exercise and why it's important to have a fit and able population. I put out the challenge to attempt the champion of all lifts, the deadlift, to all who are willing to take it on. And I applaud those of you who actually did perform this key lift in your training. A lift that comes with great perks for physical enhancements. But you also surely witness the muscle soreness it can bring. Which is not necessarily a bad thing. That's a good hurt. A feeling that tells you that you're putting in the work, forcing your body to improve. And on today's episode, we will learn how to find ways to alleviate and reduce the soreness with the techniques science and real-world application are showing truly helps improve recovery. Let's now dive into the proper ways to begin a workout routine and get your body ready for the intensity of lifting or full-action live sports. Okay, class, everyone listen up. We need to start our stretches. Everyone line up. Good. Let's do our tricep stretch. Ready and begin. Does this remind you of your days in PE class? Having to change into your PE clothes in those uncomfortable locker rooms? Do you remember the first thing that we would do before every PE class? You remember getting in lines to begin our stretching. The whole class would sit on the floor and the PE teacher would begin to go over the stretching exercises. Starting with both legs laid out and having to touch your tippy toes. This was to be done before every exercise. It was clear that the importance of stretching to avoid injury was a basic understanding, a no-brainer, a routine that was done and continues to be done in colleges and even pro sports. Well, the latest science is showing that this is a flawed method of warming up. And it's actually not as good as we thought for improved sports performance or even injury prevention. You see, this type of stretching that we did in PE class is called static stretching, but research is showing that dynamic stretching is a much more better approach. So, let's go further into the differences between the two. Static stretching that we did in PE class is a stretch that is done while the body is at rest, lengthening the muscles to its furthest point and holding that tension for around 15 to 30 seconds. While on the other hand, we have dynamic stretching that also involves lengthening and stretching of the muscle fibers but while the body is in movement that closer resembles and mimics the moves that will be performed in the workout or sport that follows. Dynamic stretching is essentially getting our bodies ready for the intensity of the exercise we're about to do by performing similar movements but with less intensity or resistance. A 1993 study found that the flexibility gained in static stretching doesn't transfer over to flexibility in full-speed sports since the sport itself usually involves movements at an elevated intensity and speed, meaning the muscle fibers that are being stretched prior using the static method are not used the same way while in a live game or workout, defeating the purpose of the stretches. Now, the whole point in stretching before a workout or game is to warm up your muscles and get blood flowing into them. So, it would make more sense to do dynamic stretching that actually gets your body moving and heart pumping faster, allowing for increased blood flow and elevating your muscles' core temperature, as well as waking up your central nervous system. Instead of static stretching that puts the body and muscles in a relaxed state and actually lowers the muscles' core temperature, which is the opposite of what we want to do for a warm-up. Even though you may feel pretty loose and ready for physical activity after static stretching, in reality, research has shown that the muscles are left weaker, lowering the performance abilities. 
Some have shown that muscle strength can be lowered by as much as 9% within the hour right after someone has done static stretching. Plus, it doesn't show to improve the effects of delayed onset muscle soreness when done before a workout. Other studies also observe that muscle explosivity and coordination is lowered, yet people still feel they need to hold that stretch until it hurts for a good warm-up. And you will also find thousands of coaches and trainers making their athletes go through these outdated stretches before a game. And going further into the evidence, a larger group of Croatian researchers also reviewed a whopping 104 studies that examined the effects of static stretching on athletic performance. And they found that even though there were a large variety in the levels of athletic abilities in between the subjects who were examined, they still all showed a decrease in their performance after static stretching. They also noticed that individuals who did both static and dynamic stretching had the perks and benefits of the dynamic exercises negated with the addition of static exercises meaning they were better off skipping the static stretching than doing both of them before a workout. Another perk of doing dynamic stretching is the enhanced range of motion that is seen around the joints, which is one of the ways it helps reduce the risk of injury, and with done with consistency, can improve your flexibility in a full intensity game or workout. Nature usually gives us clues to what works, and we can look at various animals in the wild who don't need research studies to convince them that dynamic stretching as a warm-up is the method of choice. You see, zoologists had been puzzled by the ritual dance that a stoat, which is a little short-tailed weasel, would perform before attacking its prey. These little stoats would take on much larger animals like rabbits that can be twice its size and they noticed that it would begin a dance where the little stoat would be seen jumping around in all types of acrobatic ways. It would twist and turn, jump and prance, run and rapidly change directions, and this confused the zoologist to why it was doing this dance before attempting its kill. One of the theories was that it was a dance to hypnotize the rabbit, stunning its abilities to flee and making it easier to take down. But this theory didn't make sense since the little stoat would sometimes do this dance when the larger rabbit was not in sight. So the hypnosis theory wasn't likely. You see, in reality, this little stoat was applying a form of dynamic stretching to sharpen its skills to bring down this larger animal. This dance he would perform is actually the little stoat just practicing the attack movements to allow him to better be able to do them when it mattered the most. Nature gives us clues to what works since it has taken thousands of years to develop its methods through the process of survival of the animals that adapted the best methods. Survival of the fittest and the smartest. So, now that we get an idea on why dynamic stretching is the way to go, we need to learn some ways to implement these movements. The simplest way to do this is by mimicking the exercises you're about to perform, but with less intensity. For example, if you're about to do heavy resistance leg day workout that involves deadlifts, then you would want to do at least two sets of 20 reps of the deadlift movement, but without any weight or even the bar. Just using your own body weight, you will perform the movements to get the blood flowing into the areas that will be under tension. There are also other movements that can be used for an overall warm-up, like the most basic exercise most of us can do that will help shoulder joints, and that is arm circles. These can be done by extending your arms to your side and making small circle rotations. Do this for 20 to 30 seconds, then rest, and repeat for another two sets. You can also do alternate toe touching as a dynamic stretch. You do these by starting in a standing position with your feet spread apart. Then, raise both arms into the sky and then bend over and using the right hand to touch your left foot. Then, raising back up and shooting your hands toward the sky, feeling that pull on your back muscles. 
and then right back down using your left hand to touch your right foot. Pretty simple, right? Do this 20 to 30 times, then rest and repeat for another two more sets. Another dynamic stretch you can do before your workout is arm swings with butt kicks included. To do this exercise, you will begin in a standing position and spread your arms wide. Then, smoothly swing your arms back and forth, crossing the front of your chest. While you're doing this, you will also be alternating, kicking back one heel at a time. Do these two movements simultaneously for 30 seconds, and then rest and repeat for another two more sets. And the last dynamic movement we will go over is a trunk rotation. This exercise starts in a standing position with your feet at shoulder width and place your hands on your hips. Then slightly bend your knees and begin to turn your chest from side to side. Keep your feet stable and try to tighten your core. Do this for 20 reps, then rest and repeat for another two more sets. As you improve, you can try more advanced dynamic stretches that apply to your specific sport, as well as walking lunges, glute bridges, and power skipping. These are a few examples of dynamic stretches that can be done before your workout. Now, traditional static stretching can still be useful, but they are best used on the rest days as a break in between the long hours in front of the computer, or even better, right after you have finished a workout. You see, static stretching are useful to relax your body after an intense workout and allow your body to shift back into a rebuilding and recovery state. Static stretching done after your workout will also help cool your body temperature down and help reduce muscle tightness. One of the best stretches I use after a heavy deadlifting day is called hanging arm stretch. Basically, you just hold on to a pull-up bar with arms fully extended for 10 seconds. You don't do a pull-up, just hang there. The benefits of this stretch is that it allows the tension and pressure to be relieved from the spinal discs. And considering deadlifts puts a heavy load on the discs, that when done with good form is beneficial, it's still a good idea to relieve some of that tension by applying a hanging stretch right after you have finished your workout. Ah, oh, hey, Jonathan. Is there any more coffee? Oh, no, sorry. I just finished it. I'll make another batch, though. Oh, hey. Is, is everything okay? You've looked out of it these last few days. Huh. <laughs> is it that obvious? Yeah, I'm going through a rough patch right now. I guess my stress and lack of energy is difficult to hide. Ah, uh, okay. You want to talk about it? Maybe it can help. Well, I've had a terrible month. My girlfriend broke up with me. And I have a feeling I know why. Let's just say I stopped trying the last few months we were together. I got really lazy and lost motivation for a while. Maybe it was because of all the crap I was eating. Hmm, I see. But now it's different. I'm determined. I've even started to hit the gym. I've actually gone every day since she left. Every day? Really? Yeah. I want to show her I'm not lazy. Every day after work, I go straight there and don't leave for at least three hours. I gotta make her see what she lost. Well, I'm trying to show her. Three hours every day? That's a lot, don't you think? Probably, but I won't stop. I need to see progress, and I'm willing to put the work, even if it breaks me. This story plays out in the lives of many all over the world. And while the act of taking on the challenge to improve your physical abilities is commendable and ideal for health, there needs to be a balance. Many don't realize that progress in a body transformation also depends on the rest you include in between your workouts. Placing such high demands on your body every day will not give you the best results in the long run since it will bring on extreme physical stress that will prevent the body from seeing effective and healthy change. No rest is worth anything 
except the rest that is earned. Wisdom by German novelist Jean Paul. This quote holds merit. You see, there is no shame in taking it easy, no disgrace in the body at rest, but with an exception. An exception that calls for a training day to precede it by completing a workout worthy of rest. We will now go into the importance of rest and recovery for an effective body transformation. I have already expressed the importance of physical exercise and how it should be seen as an essential tool to speed up the progress in a transformation, as well as receiving the longevity benefits it brings. But rest and recovery is also a key pillar to health and weight loss that many forget or choose to ignore altogether. This is a misguided approach to fitness. You see, your body's ability to function and continue to improve will largely depend on the rest that it gets. Our bodies are not undestructible superhuman machines that can keep performing without regard to rest, even though many, especially the younger athletes and even the heartbroken may try. In order to see continued progress as well as sustain good health and energy, in the long run, we need to give rest its rightful spot on our list of priorities. I understand that we all have passionate goals that drive us to want to spend countless hours in the gym day after day, but the concept of overtraining is a real thing. It's important to realize that progress and muscle growth begins the second your gym workout ends. The moment you begin the cool down stretches will trigger a process of rebuilding. You see, while you're exercising and putting in that hard work in the gym, causes your body to go into a form of catabolism which is the breakdown of various biomolecules as well as muscle fibers via micro tears. These tears in your muscles leave you weaker and are a form of physical stress on your body, which is why recovery is just as important as the workout. Applying effective recovery strategies will help your body begin the anabolic process of rebuilding and rest is the first strategy that needs to be applied. Rest days allow your muscle and central nervous system to heal after an intense workout, especially one that involves heavy resistance training, which is best for an effective body transformation. I want to go over the recovery method I use that have allowed me to go through my own body transformation, where I lost 60 pounds of pure fat. These methods can be a big help, and you should try to implement them into your own routine. Apply them with consistency until they become a habit. Remember, consistency is king. So here's what I do to upgrade my recovery. As soon as I finish the last rep at the gym, I begin a self-applied therapy on my body that begins with a post-workout static stretching to relax my central nervous system. While I do my stretching, I make sure to take deep, profound breaths. Next, I try to consume at least 25 to 40 grams of protein within one hour after my workout. This helps aid the anabolic process of rebuilding of muscles. I usually get this from my Burn It Green Smoothie, which is full of micronutrients as well as proteins and healthy fats. And since I have upgraded my system to a fat-burning machine, heavy carb ups to spike insulin are not needed. Now, if you have hit your goals and are doing intense activities like soccer, football, or intense daily training, and have improved insulin sensitivity, and can get away with choosing to cycle back to a form of lower carb modified paleo diet, then I still wouldn't overdo carbs post-workout. For these individuals, I still would advise to skip those heavy carb ups that most mainstream athletes do and instead try to stay in fat-burning mode as long as possible, and save those allowed real whole food paleo forms of carbs for dinner. In fifth stage keto, I go over how and why this would be beneficial for those who are totally new to dieting and have a lot of weight to lose, and how they can use a modified paleo as a stepping stone to a keto lifestyle. Again, the ebook goes further into how and why, I will have to devote a whole nother episode entirely to post-workout nutrition. But for now, to sum it up in a broad perspective, post-workout nutrition will vary by individual as well as their goals. 
and that's part of the fun. We each have the responsibility of understanding our unique bodies and our goals and how to adjust your nutrition to set you up for the best results. If you need personal coaching and help with your own journey, then just go to my coaching page at burnitnutrition.com forward slash coaching. Let's now dive into the next recovery strategy that can be applied, and that is cryotherapy. Now, this is a love-hate relationship that is not easily endured. But like many things that are good for us, the momentary discomfort that comes with it has its benefits. Many professional sports are applying post-workout cold therapy to help reduce acute inflammation and alleviate the effects of DOMS, which is short for delayed onset muscle soreness that can be felt within 24 hours after an intense workout or sporting event. DOMS is felt by the body via lowered range of motion in the joints, stiffness and tenderness in the muscles, and reduced strength and flexibility. And cryotherapy can come in and help alleviate some of these issues. Now, there are various ways of applying cryotherapy to your routine. Many professional sports use ice baths, where they fill a large tub with ice and water, and then their athletes jump into them after a workout, which can be pretty funny to watch. Another method of cryotherapy that could be used is called contrast baths, or hot-cold immersion therapy. This method involves going from hot temperature environments like a hot sauna to rapid cold water immersion like an ice bath and continued alternating between the two, spending three to four minutes in the hot environment and one to two minutes in the cold. But when it comes to recovery, it seems that sticking with just cold therapy may be the most effective out of the two environments. With advancements in technology, we are getting access to new and impressive forms of cryotherapy. And many of the top athletes are using cryo chambers to get the benefits of longer sessions of ice baths in just three minutes. Or should I say, three agonizing minutes. Cryo chambers look like high-tech versions of tanning beds, but you're standing inside in your undies opposed to laying down. Technician closes the door, sealing your body inside, while your head is sticking out of the top, allowing you to breathe. I have put myself through this experience and got a chance to feel the effects of these high-tech cryo chambers. And yes, they are not a toy, but are very intense. These chambers usually come with three levels of intensity. The higher the level, the colder the therapy. When I first tried it, I was planning on doing the third level, but thank God they talked me out of it. Since the third level has temperature drops that fall to about negative 220 degrees below zero. You heard that right. Now that's cold. So cold that if you walk in with wet skin or clothes, then you would have some serious issues with frostbite since water instantly freezes at these temperatures, which is why the techs make sure you are dry. So, I went with level 2 instead, which was at negative 150 degrees below zero. But don't be fooled, this level also is not easily endured. Just imagine stepping into a chamber in your underwear, and as soon as they seal you in and press that button, begins the release of super cool nitrogen vapor. And almost immediately it feels like your body is teleported to a blizzard at the tops of an ice-cold mountain where you happen to be practically in your birthday suit. This instant freezing temperature sent my body into a slight shock, and every second of those three minutes were excruciating. With every second that passed, I felt my body stiffen and become harder to focus and keep my composure. The only real protection I had from the frigid cold was the thick winter socks and gloves they provided to prevent frostbite on your extremities. But once those three minutes had passed, the technician opened the door and I stepped out. And in all honesty, I felt like I was beginning to freeze. My skin felt like it had small ice particles that were crackling off, and I was happy to be out of that chamber. So why would I and others put ourselves through this? Well, as soon as that shock faded away, and I slowly put my clothes back on, 
began to feel what all the hype was about. Just three minutes in the super-cooled high-tech chamber, my body felt like it had gotten years younger. My aches and pains that I had felt in my shoulder from my football injuries felt way better, almost as if they had just received a long massage session. Now, the downside of these methods of cryo is that they're just too expensive for the average person. Just one of these three-minute sessions can cost up to $60, which is why only the top paid athletes and even Tony Robbins, the motivational speaker and hugely successful businessman, do these on a regular basis. But not all of us have access to these awesome machines, so I go over an at-home version of cryotherapy that won't break the bank and can give you these benefits in my 5th Stage Keto Body Transformation ebook, which you can get at burnitnutrition.com. So, we have gone over the importance of post-workout static stretching and getting at least 25 to 30 grams of protein within that hour after your workout, as well as the ways some others apply cryotherapy as a tactic for their own recovery. This leads us to our next strategy for enhanced recovery. And this one we all love to do, and that is getting a massage. Of course, not all of us have the means to get a private massage after every workout, even though that sounds awesome. But there are other ways to get these rejuvenating benefits with the use of self-massaging exercises, also called SMR, or self-myofascial release. Some of the therapeutic benefits SMR brings are further inducing a state of relaxation, as well as lowering muscle stiffness and promoting improved blood circulation. Now, many of us have realized that for a massage to be effective, it has to hurt a little bit, but the payoff is usually worth it. Did you notice a pattern here with the use of pain and discomfort in the right doses for therapeutic uses? It's interesting how that works. Well, one of the ways I do SMR after my workouts is by using my portable electric back massager to relax my muscles, usually an hour after I do my at-home cryotherapy. But even these can be a bit costly, so the best option is a foam roller or even a massage stick. These are fairly inexpensive ways to get the benefits of SMR without the use of fancy gadgets. I try to do my foam rolling twice a day. The first is usually in the mornings, after my MCT coffee. Essentials and priorities first, right? And coffee's a must. Well, after my morning water, of course. Then, the second time I foam roll is towards the end of the day, usually before dinner. It's actually one of my favorite parts of my day. At our home, we have a built-in fireplace that makes it super easy to get it lit, just with a simple switch of the wall. I wouldn't say it's better than the real ones, since you don't get that wood-burning smell that we all love about our campfire memories, but it makes it easy to get warm while I do my rolling exercises and stretches. Plus, we got a thick rug that is super soft and nice to lay on. But anyways, my point is to find ways to enjoy this time of the day. Use it as a way to connect with your thoughts but make them peaceful and motivating thoughts that encourage you and push you to continue these healthy habits. Sometimes you have to be your own number one fan. Making this time of your day a special and even spiritual part of your day can be a trigger to heightened joy and overall happiness. Plus, it can make you look forward to doing them even if it involves some discomfort. Remember that just like in life, many of the moments that strengthen you and develop who you become can come from the biggest struggles and moments of discomfort. Now, there are also perks of doing your foam rolling exercises before a workout. The science is still unclear on exactly how it helps, but one theory is that it allows for increased blood flow into the muscles being put under pressure. If you think of your muscle fibers being like a wet mop, well, the pressure the foam roller applies is like squeezing and wringing the mop, pressing the liquid or blood out of it. Well, once that pressure of the roller has passed over an area, will allow the muscle fibers to get that rush of blood back into them. This has shown to improve blood circulation and increase relaxation and reduce tightness of the muscles after it's been applied. So how do you go about doing foam rolling? Well, one of my favorite rolling exercises 
is by sitting on the floor and placing the foam against the lower back, and then begin to lay back placing your weight on the roller. Then, very slowly begin using your hands and feet to roll yourself down, making the pressure go up your lower back to about just before your mid-back. You want to spend at least 10 seconds per section while gradually moving it up your lower back, and then slowly back down. Next, I like to sit back up by placing my hands on the roller for stability and using your core muscles to lift yourself up. Then, place your hands on the floor behind you for support and slowly begin to put the pressure on the glutes, which is your bottom. Then, continue down each hamstring, which is the backside of your legs, doing one at a time. Then, when that's done, I flip over on my knees and bend forward almost as if I'm getting in a plank position with my elbows on the floor, and I place the roller at my hip. Then, very slowly begin to allow the pressure to go down my quad, or the upper front facing part of my leg, until I reach my knee, then slowly roll it back up. After I have done the front of my leg, I turn to a side plank position, placing the roller at my side pocket and rolling down the side of my leg. Now it may hurt too much to place all your weight on one side, so you can use the leg that isn't being rolled as a form of weight support. Then do the same thing to the other leg starting with the front and moving to the side muscles. Very soon I will post examples of some of these exercises at burnitnutrition.com forward slash recovery. Some other tips for foam rolling is to avoid putting pressure over bony areas like your knees. Also, it is helpful to do some static stretching after rolling, as long as it's not before a workout, which we already addressed why in the beginning of this episode. Also, it is good to leave the pressure of the roller on areas that feel the most sore or tender, or any knots in the muscles, almost as if you're rolling out some pizza dough, low-carb pizza, of course. So, learn to enjoy the pain and look forward to how it makes you feel once it's completed. These have been some recovery methods that can be done on the day of the workout. Now, let's move on to another huge factor to recovery that will affect your progress. Let's discuss the importance of a key pillar to health, weight loss, and recovery that needs to be addressed. And this is, of course, sleep. Getting good sleep is absolutely vital in a body transformation, as well as in general health. In episode one, we went over why this is a key pillar to address. It really is vital. Remember, the human body can only survive without water for around three days and without food for up to three to four weeks, and it only can survive without sleep on average of 10 to 12 days before the risk of death from exhaustion can become a real threat. But the negative effects of sleep deprivation are seen much sooner, and when it comes to recovery, sleep deprivation can play a huge factor that when ignored, can lead to a reduction in anabolic hormones that help the process of healing and building new muscle. Remember that the purpose of sleep is to allow the body to heal itself from the inflammation and damage that is caused throughout the day, as well as rebuilding the tissue damage that occurred. Now other negative effects of not getting enough sleep can be a lowering in overall mood and in mental cognition plus an elevation in overall fatigue, stress, and depression. I have learned this lesson the hard way from my previous nights where I tried to pull an all-nighter with my recording and have felt the effects the next day, almost making me feel like I'm hungover. So, I learned to shut off that computer and get in bed for my ZZs and have the energy to wake up fresh and have another highly productive day. Plus, sleep deprivation can cause an increase in cravings towards junky, sugary carbs, while also decreasing your insulin sensitivity. It really does affect your ability to perform in all areas of your life. So make the effort to put priority into getting at least 7-8 to eight hours of sleep. Now, I don't know about you, but this is an easy strategy to apply. You really don't gotta tell me twice. I love and enjoy my hours spent in slumber. The last strategy for recovery we're going to go over is including some type of light activity on your off days. This is called active recovery. 
We do this by including some type of movement throughout your off day, like light walking or even dynamic and static stretching. Implementing these exercises on days we don't do more intense exercises will enhance blood circulation to help speed up the recovery process. We have reached the segment of the show where we take a break from the science and find ways to get yummy weight loss friendly foods into our bellies. So what's on the menu? Today, we will learn how to make a quick and easy post-workout meal to have when you're short on time. We are making sliced roast beef bacon roll-ups. These are a perfect fast and on-the-go snack, and a good source of protein and healthy fats to fuel your engine and aid lean muscle recovery without the insulin spikes and weight gain. Now these roll-ups ain't no burn it green smoothie, which is what I have waiting for me post-workout, but it's still a good option when you need something last minute. So here's what you do to make these two roll-ups. Simply buy pre-sliced roast beef from the deli in your local market. Then, get a large skillet and place it over medium-high heat. Next, get two large uncooked bacon strips. Look for the thick cut ones, preferably not cured in sugar. And then, once the skillet is hot, lay the bacon slices in. Once the bacon has crisped, and has rendered its grease, you can set it aside in a covered bowl. Then, add two asparagus spears to the skillet using the rendered bacon fat as an oil. While the asparagus cooks, you can lay out two separate slices of roast beef on a plate. Then, lay on two thin slices of pastrami on top of each slice of roast beef. Then, add one slice of any cheese of your choice. Some good options are Kobe Jack, Gouda, Pepper Jack, or Cheddar. Next, add two slices of thinly sliced turkey meat on each stack, and follow that with a very small amount of fresh spinach. When the asparagus is tender, add the spear to each stack. Then, add one bacon strip to each. Then, simply roll it up and enjoy. Now, if you want melted cheese in your roast beef roll-up, then simply microwave it for 10 seconds. Also, if you want the express version of this snack, Simply skip the asparagus to save time and still enjoy a yummy roll-up. This should help you get some post-workout protein and healthy fats when you're on the go. We have now reached the end of another episode of the Burn It Nutrition podcast. I hope you learned some good takeaways from this show that when done correctly and with consistency can be used to improve your physical abilities. Some of these strategies can help make you feel fresh and ready to put in the work when it matters the most. But don't forget to zen out and switch gears by relaxing your body when that time comes. It can't be full speed all the time. Your days will be much more fruitful when there is a balance that lessens the stress on the body. Find ways to implement some of these strategies like foam rolling into your day and see if it can bring on a better and more capable version of you. Give it a shot and you may be surprised what a little calculated discomfort can bring. Also, remember that the work you put in the gym won't be the flagship to your body transformation, even with the use of some of the strategic methods we went over today. Long-term progress and overall health will come when nutrition is at the highest of priorities. And having mostly real food that isn't overly processed is the best way to go. And ultimately, your goals, activity levels, and degree of insulin resistance will determine your chosen approach to a diet. And the ketogenic diet, or also a version of a lower-carb paleo diet, will have the best results for the majority of the population. Thank you for listening to another episode. I create these podcasts with the hope of encouraging you to continue towards your goals, hopefully triggering a change in your life to be active and choose health and happiness as a priority. Also, if you want to see more in how I train and live, then come find me on Facebook. I'm under Burn It Nutrition. I post some of my own homemade dinners as well as some funny motivations that you can check out. I'm also on Instagram under Burn It Nutrition. And I'm pretty active on Instagram. 
so definitely come check me out there. Again, that's under Burn It Nutrition to get a glimpse of some of the behind the scenes of how I live. Now, friends, make this coming week a great one. Keep getting closer to your goals with every new day. Any progress going forward is better than going backwards. So put in the work and stay driven. Remember to learn to endure and even enjoy the momentary discomfort to receive the strength and improvements it can bring. Now, I hope you join us on the next episode. It won't be the same if you're not here. Now brace yourself, because it's time to let it burn. Burn.